Hello and welcome to another episode of the Trash Talk Podcast. I'm Jeremy and today I have no one, but um, I have a very interesting topic, I think, and that is Doctor Who villains, underused, overused, you know, that whole shebang. Uh, the initial thought was the Daleks are kind of overrated, or at the very least overused. I do quite like them, but it feels like they're in everything, and that seems bad to a degree. Uh, it's not inherently, I guess, bad that something comes up a lot, but given just how broad that universe is, it seems kind of weird to have specifically the Daleks keep coming up, and especially in New Who you had the Daleks being supposedly destroyed multiple times only to come back later. Um, now, yes, there was some theme to it where they are very resilient and they find a way to survive. That is part of what the Daleks are. So, in a sense, there is some thematic relevance to why they keep coming back, but at the same time, it's like, at least stop killing them off if you want to keep using them. Um, I mean, it's not just the Daleks, though, right? Like, the Master feels like he gets used a bit too much, but then at the same time, I don't recall a single Master story where I felt like the presence of the Master was unnecessary. I should say, um, I've mostly only watched New Who. I've watched the first season and a bit of uh, Classic Who. So, I can't really speak to that, but that's also not really relevant for this discussion. I mean, there are some classic who villains that, uh, monsters and villains that could probably be brought back that I just am not aware of. But broadly speaking, this is about sort of the direction of New Who, right? I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, you might have noticed I had the Chibnall topic, I think, two weeks back. Um, and now that Doctor Who is coming back in November, it it feels like, you know, that this is now the time to talk about, you know, new showrunner. <laughs> I was going to say new doctor. Well, I mean, <laughs> um, actually not really new showrunner in that sense either. But, you know, it, it is still a new era of Doctor Who and it feels like this is something to talk about. Um, so let me keep going over some of the overused ones and then go into where I think we have some more room uh, for using classic or slightly less lasting monsters. Um... Yeah, I've written up Blink was excellent, right? But it's possibly the best episode of Doctor Who. Some of the subsequent Angel episodes were not that good. I the whole like the image of an angel as an angel thing is kind of a cool concept, but the angel in your eye that, that was a bit much. I I think the angels would easily be on the list of like, hey, why haven't they done anything with those again list if they hadn't? So I, I can see where the impulse is to use them. Uh, but I personally... I actually didn't mind uh, the... What was it called? Village of the Angels? The uh, Flux episode? So there clearly is something there. But I just think that um, there is... There has been a little bit too much angels overall, and some of the stuff that they've added over time to try to make them more scary or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I get the idea where it's like, oh yeah, um, you have to look at them so that they can't kill you. Well, or send you back in time. Also, if you look at them too long, then um, then that's also bad. I, I can see sort of the theoretical appeal there, but. I don't know. Uh, Sontarans. I think Sontarans are actually on the list of, like, cool, classic, cool villains that is fine that they occasionally come back. The problem is that I feel like most of the time in New Who, and I don't know how it has been classic Who, I know they are classic Who characters, but it feels like they've been mostly played as a joke. Um, it feels like the Sontarans could be a serious threat, right? They're supposed to be, like, some of the greatest warriors in the universe. And, I mean, their appearance in Flux was kind of cool. And the whole chocolate thing was a bit weird, but um, just because they're supposed to be menacing doesn't mean that they can't have the funny moments. Uh, if you have, for example, uh, the Poison Sky, I think, was also one where they were fairly threatening, but also the whole, like, I think they had, like, a tech CEO or something who they were working with, and that whole situation was a bit goofy. Um, I feel like Sontarans aren't necessarily overused, they just aren't used right. Um, but 
to take some positive spin, I think there are quite a few uh, types of creatures, mostly, um, that could be used more. Uh, the Zygon, uh, classic Who monster, have been used in the Wesley Davis era, and I don't think really since... Actually, um... Yeah, no, the... Was the time with the Doctor? Well, one of those specials uh, did have Zygons in it uh, as kind of a very important part of the story. So, in fact, uh, it wasn't even the Russell Davis era, the one I was hanging up with the uh, with the horse, right? That was also in that special. See, I was thinking 10th Doctor, and, but yeah, no, it was during the 11th Doctor era, I think, but, you know, Zygons. Uh, they're cool. Uh, haven't really seen them in a while. I think we could do another good Zygon story. The Sycorax... From the first Christmas special. They're a cool design. They're, they were an invasion force, right? Like, I... I don't recall if they specifically said, like, Oh, this was their entire fleet and we destroyed the entire species or whatever. But, um... I think they might have even fled. So, you know, they could come back. I don't see why they couldn't. The Quillotane School Reunion. Um... I mean, that's just a cool concept, right? Like, they... They're kind of the, like, a more biological version of the Borg. Well, sans the hive mind, which I guess is an important part of the Borg, but the whole, like, oh yeah, we not only transform into the species that we try to conquer, which actually is not a Borg thing, but also, like, in, uh, incorporating elements from other species into themselves. You know, they got wings from some bat-like species. They've uh, had all sorts of things. And I think Encountering them again would be cool, and maybe somewhere else on a different planet. Maybe they look um, look fairly different because we're earlier in the timeline, later in the timeline, whatever. They're kind of very malleable, and so I think that there is a lot that can be done with those. Um, I wrote them down, but I'm not perhaps unsure. The the dream crabs from one of the other Christmas specials. I don't remember that one all too well. I was looking through uh, episode lists to try to come up with some interesting villains uh, that we haven't seen in a while, but I don't really one hundred percent recall. All of what they were about, I mean, obviously, I think they were played kind of like the, what's it called, the Black Rose or whatever in uh, Superman, where it kind of puts you in this dream world, which is an interesting concept. I just don't know how much you can use that. Uh, I don't know how many stories you can have with that, but I feel like there's probably at least one more good story with those in there. The Vashta Narada from the Silence of the Library. Um... I mean, shadows, right? Like, evil shadows? That's just a cool concept. I mean, a lot of what made them particularly creepy in that episode is the spacesuits that were always still talking if the person was dead. So, that is very unique to that setting, but I do think there are Vashan Rana stories that you could tell. Uh, let's give Chibnall some credit. Um, if you want to keep having sort of a threatening Mastermind character, you don't need to use the Master. How about the Serpent uh, from Flux? His position flex felt kind of weird because it's like, oh yeah, he's um, boss, uh, the boss of um, that one pseudo companion character whose name I forget. Um, and it's like, oh yeah, cool. And then all of a sudden he's infiltrating unit, like out of nowhere. It's like, oh, that is interesting, I guess. And then they don't do anything with it. So having another unit story, maybe. Um, I mean, we had a unit story in the part of the Doctor that didn't address any of that at all. But maybe. Having like a, like a historical unit thing, and then the serpent is there, and the doctor has to stop the serpent or something. That this, I think, there's ideas there. Also, the content of like the actual like serpent being detachable from him, like that. There's some cool stuff there. Um, classic monsters. Well, I'm already mentioned Zygons, but um, classic monsters that have shown up in New Who that arguably could be used again to some degree. Uh, the Ice Warriors, I think, at one episode. Uh, you know, the obviously is more there. Uh, I, I don't know how many Ice Warriors stories you can tell because they're not that all over the place, but um, I, I the thing is some ideas. Salarians were pretty big during the 11th Doctor's run. Um, I do think there could still be other good stories about them. Um, I'm not sure if there's ever been a story that's like just focusing on like the TARDIS lands at the center of the Earth or whatever, and we're just dealing with Salarians without them, like, wanting to invade the service world or something. Um, the Sea Devils. Now, not right now, obviously. We've just had Legend of the Sea Devils, and that one was a 
possibly the worst episode in the general run. But that's not really the Sea Devil's fault. As a matter of fact, I quite like the Sea Devil costumes that they used, even though they do look a bit goofy, but I think they they have that sort of charming retro thing where it's like, oh yeah, th- those are a classic Who villain that still looks like they used to back in the day. Kind of like how they, uh, was it well enough in time where they had the Cybermen and they had like their classic Monday since I remember like the, just the, the like cloth mask, whatever that's it, they wear rather than the full metallic like Lumi- uh, Lumex Cybermen. Um, Lumic. A- anyways, uh, so I think there's a lot that you could do with the Sea Devils. Um, I think even making the pirates wasn't a terrible idea. It's just that a lot about that story was a terrible idea. Um, and obviously that, that goofy jump. Uh, everyone points out, but I mean, the, the story itself just wasn't very good. There's a lot of logical gaps. Um, but yeah, I think I think there's... We don't always need to use, you know, the Daleks and Cybermen. I didn't even mention Cybermen. I honestly don't... But I mean, I did mention them. I'm not in the list. I don't feel that strongly about them. Um, they do get used somewhat frequently, but I feel like they're not as obvious as the Daleks. Although, maybe at some point in the story that work. I mean, I find them in some ways more interesting, although, in theory, the Daleks do the same thing as the Submarine, uh, sometimes, where they they have their own robo-men and uh, the Dalek puppets or whatever. I forget what they were called, the ones with the Daleks talking in the forehead. So they do sometimes convert humans as well. As a matter of fact, uh, I think when they were on the game station, uh, that's what it's called. And, and then on that satellite station, they actually turn humans into Daleks. So, you know, uh, but, and, and also the reinvention of the Daleks, I think, has had some cool things, right? Like, the, um, the Cult of Scarra was a cool concept. So I, I do think there are ways to use them to make it interesting, but just like, oh, there's no more of Daleks. It's like, isn't there always? Um, yes, yeah, Cybermen, slightly less used than Daleks, slightly cooler than Daleks, maybe. That's maybe a bit of a controversial take, but um, I, I see more sort of potential for them. Um, also, I didn't write them down because I was looking only through the Doctor Who list, but uh, the Weevils were a pretty big deal in Torchwood, and I think when I looked up appearances, they were like, oh yeah, there's like three Doctor Who episodes where there's like, I think one of the Weev- there's some Weevils in the Pandorica opens where there's like all sorts of alien, uh, most enemies of the Doctor, but I mean, I don't think he's ever encountered Weevils, and there's like a database entry somewhere, but they've never actually had like a full appearance where they were really like the relevant enemies in the story. Uh, in Doctor Who. Uh, I mean, there's probably stuff from Search and Adventures that you could pull from. I haven't seen that show yet either. Um, I'll get around to it eventually. It's not actually that long. So, um, but yeah, uh, also, of course, the Expanded Universe, um, if you want to call it that, I think I talked about that before, but like, there's probably a lot of cool stuff you could use from the novels and the audio stories if you can get the re- uh, relevant licenses because those things are not necessarily owned by the by the BBC, which is when well, it gets a bit more complicated, they can't just use some of those things. And also, I think they're, I think they're not supposed to write stories that reference that like require you to have necessarily read things in the expanding universe or listened to whatever. Um, which both logically makes sense, but I think that's also like an actual mandate that they have um, to make the story somewhat self-contained. I think that's perfectly reasonable, but it doesn't mean you can't use those things. You just have to introduce them in a way where the viewer understands what's going on. Um, I read not too long ago a novel called The Longest Day, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, it's not really a not really specific enemy, but a setting of like a planet where like time is all sorts of fractured. I think there's some interesting concepts that you could use from the extended universe. Um, if, again, if you have the relevant licenses. Um, settings are also another thing. Um, I'm probably not going to talk about it right now, but there are definitely not that many recurring settings in Uhu. Of the Earth. Um, there were actually multiple New Earth episodes. And I think there were multiple Scar episodes. There were multiple Gallifrey episodes. But having one or two alien planets that just occasionally recur, you know, not overusing them, of course, but just make the universe a little bit more cohesive uh, would be cool. I mean, that's sort of what Earth has done in a lot of ways. Uh, that's why UNIT keeps coming up everywhere. Torchwood used to for a while. Uh, Torchwood 1, that is, before they were destroyed. Um, and so you had those things that made it feel like there was some actual continuity there, right? Because sometimes in the newer Nuku episodes, like, the Earth gets invaded, 
and like next year they come around and no one ever remembers seeing aliens before. It's like, and you know, at first it was like, oh, it's because of the tears in the universe, and when we fix those, people forgot about aliens, or actually when they were there, people forgot about uh, whatever. Okay, and then it was, oh yeah, humans just don't want to remember this sort of stuff, so they kind of automatically forget. No, I I don't think so. So I don't know. There's um, I, I, that's another thing I guess about Doctor Who in general, where it's like I wish there was a bit more continuity in the sense of if we show up on Earth and there's an adventure on Earth that like oh the entire planet was invaded, why does no one remember? Arguably, the Earth would change. People that remember, that's one of those things that happens in fiction where sometimes it's weird how the status quo comes back, and in this case, you know, you have Unit and Torchwood in some sense trying to, you know, keep the veil, if you will, um, while simultaneously those profiting from alien tech. So there's a little bit of that, but the problem is you can't really diverge the Doctor Who Earth too much from the real world, because for all you know, the show's gonna keep going on for 100 years, and if you keep diverging it further and further, it's also going to be weird. I don't have any easy solutions to that one, but that's a whole separate topic. Um, which, I guess, let's move on to facts of the week. My fact of the week is that sag the Screen Actors Guild, and uh, what does AFTRA stand for? Alliance? No, no, that's another one. Uh, what was sag before they fused? They were... Because SAG and AFTRA used to be two separate organizations, SAG and AFTRA. Uh, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Anyways, uh, those those ones. Um, they're on strike, which makes it the second time ever that the Writers Guild and the actors have been on strike at the same time. The first time being in 1960. It's also the first time since 1980 that there was a writer... Uh, uh, an, actor strike at all. A writer strike happens a little more frequently, it seems. I think it was a big one in 2008, I want to say. Um, but yeah, there is um, there's a double strike going on. And obviously, uh, let's see, 2007, 2008, yeah, 1988, 1981, 1960. Um, those were the writer's guild strikes. Um, but yeah, no, th- th- that's interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a little unfortunate how that is going to in the short term, impact um, productions, but obviously in the long term, that is supposed to have positive effects. Plus, obviously, paying people living wages and like not taking their jobs away. There's just some good stuff in there. Uh, obviously, fully support the strike, but um, still a little unfortunate. But also, I, mean, I guess it's a little unfortunate that it was necessary for them to strike in the first place. Is I guess how you need to put that. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's the first time that both of us have been striking at the same time, and that seems like a big deal. Um, union membership in the United States in total numbers is up. I think the percentage is actually down because more people have entered the workforce in non-union workplaces than in unionized ones, but um, it does seem like there is both more unions and more union representation, and also it seems like unions are becoming more meaningful again. It feels like you hear more about unions actually doing stuff and getting stuff done, and, you know, strikes happening, and that sort of stuff, so that's actually a good direction. Um, I think there's a couple of other strikes going on at the same time. Uh, I, th- I think I've seen someone uh, mention a line that's like, oh, uh, it seems like the US is maybe stumbling its way into an accidental general strike, where it's like, oh, uh, more and more uh, different um, units are going on strike. So that's an interesting development. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's not too much else to be said about it until that resolves. Hopefully soon, but um, obviously that I have no influence over. Halftime show is the crossword. I've done it last two times when I was solo, maybe even three. And I figured let's do another one. Uh, this one is called Break Your Mother's Back. I don't know what that's all about. Um, Apple co founder is presumably Jobs. Um, Mayberry Boy. Beer. Barrels. Oh, kegs. I was going to say, is there like a specific beer thing? But yeah. Yes, there is. Um, antlered animal. Elk. 
Uh, Comedian Spit is a joke, I suppose. Uh, German car company Opel. Uh, top banana. Top banana. Huh? Highs. His? His in France. Oh. I was like, do you want salus? No, um, no, no, no. Uh, his in Fr France is, well, sa, son, or si, depending on the gender and number of the things that are his, but I think we got there. Uh, nope, still in home. Uh, I do crosswords. What you can do to all of the highlighted words? Well, um, we'll see when we have more of those. Silent Mark's brother. This blank blank box instruction side up. Or not? Way up? No. This box instruction. Thus. Spoke Zarath instruction. No, um, therefore. So. I got nothing. Uh, Curbs, Heinz, or R. And B slash disco singer Lynn. I guess we're looking for a name. Deep well, Depp voiced reptile. Isn't Johnny Depp? Fervor. Zeal. I don't know. Computer controlled opponent. Um. NPC. No, uh, opponent. Sounds like level of CPU. Uh, yep. Keystone Lawman. No, well, that's not gonna help. Uh, that's probably not gonna help. And I mean, up is probably right, but isn't isn't it usually like this side up? Uh, San Andreas and Vice City are GTAs. Hi, ah, I got a plural. Uh, country music's McIntyre. Blank blank now currently. Well, I would have said right now, but with two blanks, I haven't got blank. Blank. I haven't got a clue. How is this? Buffet stipulation. All you can eat. Sometimes I'm not that stupid. Musical embellishment. AC advocate is Tesla. Uh, approximately. Roughly. A something at. I don't actually know that. Not out. Well, I mean, in. I don't know what they want from me. Uh, no, don't know. As of? As of now? Okay. Musical embellishment. Grace? Never heard of it. Approximately, whoops, about, I see. Uh, not out safe? It's, it's a baseball thing. Explain further. Elaborate. Elaborate. Got it in one. Comedian and voice actress Kristen. Prosperous outlying community. Minimalize computer feature. Minim. Minimizable computer feature. Window. Uh, safe. Joke. Oh yeah, crack. You can crack a window. You can crack a safe. You can crack a joke. Um. Wait, I looked at those. Uh, she's gonna swing from the chandelier. It was a song. Similarly, using they're looking for the singer, but I don't know. Uses uses a needle and thread. Is this just like sewn? Like I don't know what they're looking for. Um, one one two in old Rome. Oh wait, I'm looking for Roman numerals like. Uh, what is it? C for a hundred, X for ten. Uh, yeah, CX one, CXII. Yeah. 
I got there, top banana. Animal fat. Uh, is it? I'm thinking outlying community, like a suburb, and there's an X there, like X, like external herb. That I've never heard that before. But exurbia, that's a band, right? Um, I also got that one. Can no lard doesn't really help. Um, college military program. Looking for a military academy? I mean, no dip Sherlock. Okay, I don't know. Genius Home is a lamp. Wait, you can't frack a lamp though. What? Uh, oil lamp. That's not how. I am confused. Uh, nearest star, the sun. Horned. Undulate? Cypher writer Ellison or NBA commentator Kevin? Nope. Youth baseball organization? Nope. Did I do these down ones? No. Uh, common fish and chips ingredient? Well, I mean, they have fish and they have fries. And the fries are made from potatoes. Is it a specific fish like a cod? Okay, cool. Uh, butcher, baker, and candlestick maker hang out. This is like a joke or a rhyme or something. Um, Alaskan City, Anchorage. How does one spell Anchorage? First try. College military program. I do not know what they want for. No. Duh? Okay. Genius Home. I, I feel like I'm missing something there, but. Um, drive blank, heel types, radius neighbor, radius on the shoulder somewhere, right? I don't know. Uh, noble gas, neon. Uh, 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 uh. hey, we have first and last letters, that should be useful. Or not. Um, behind schedule is late. And da -da -da -da. Speedwagon, R-E-O! Uh, German-based supermarket chain is Aldi. Um, yes, I looked at that question already, I looked at that question already. Interlace. Weave. Sandwich meats. Blank, blank, safe and warm, California dreaming lyrics. Oh god. California. Time gone by. Is that, oh, is it just passed? Indiana's item. Oh, oh, Indiana Jones is a whip. That's not an eye. <laughs> um, there we go. You can uh, blank blank a horse to lead, I believe. Lead A. But you can't make it drink. Uh, pentameter parts. Oh boy. Um, entertainment center components. Uh, sandwich meats. I feel like I should know the California Dream lyrics though. It's a little disappointing. <clears throat> Uh, dedicatee of Beethoven piece of a Beethoven piece. He dedicated the piece. Uh, uh, Hunger Games Nation. Oh, they, yeah, they, they did have a name. Um, I mean, it's it's in the states, but I think they have a new name. Say cheese smile, because you can crack a smile. Um, short records CDs. 
No, 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 no. LPs are the long ones. Um, what do I want? EPs? Yeah, yeah. Re records in the traditional sense, yes, yes. Not just some that has re a recording. On the blank running away, I mean, I would have said on the run, but I'm clearing up. Uh, fighting Big Ten team. Fighting? Do they have a football program? Um, I don't know about a fan. Uh, painters stand. Uh, eel, I think. Eel, like that. Okay. Iconic XFL jersey. <laughs> he hate me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that 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 one is iconic. Uh, uh, yes, granted. Um, yeah. I, uh, how of Elisa? Yes, obviously. Yes. No. I'm. Yeah. That that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Panem. Yep. I also one that I should have known. In German, they literally called Tribute von Panem, uh, tributes of Panem. So yeah, like or from, I guess literally. Uh, bra -bra 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 -bra. You would think with one letter missing, I should get this. Um, common article. The. It's a grammar question. Antlered animal. What well, did elk? Um. Moose. A uh, king or donkey? Kong. Poses a question. Ask. Ask. Um. What boost? But but Boston's genre. Ska. Um. Heel types. Oh boy. What? Country Hall of Famer Williams or Baseball Hall of Famer Aaron? I see. Hank. I have, I have heard of Hank Williams. Uh, early birds? Eggs. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, antlered animal. Thag. Stilettos. Uh, radius neighbor, still don't know that one. Uh, genius home. I feel like I should know this. Uh, Horn, Angelette, I. Mm, mm. Sapphire writer, Ellison, or I make. I haven't heard of either, but I'm assuming it's a last name because Kevin and Ellison both sound like first names. Um, which doesn't really help me that much, actually. Uh, it looks like it's supposed to say eagle. Uh, in good health. Oh, I didn't even see that. Well, praiseful poem is an ode. Uh, still don't know these guys. Um, little, little, what? Little, like what? I'm a little confused, but that's little something, right? I mean, I guess I will know this because of the. Oh wait, little there's an L missing there, obviously, yeah, and there's Illini. Okay. And it's not little eagle. It's a little something though, isn't it? Uh TV Set. Uh, sandwich meats. Um, I, you know what? We're just gonna do it the unsportsmanlike way. Hams. Oh, it's just ham. Okay. Uh, oh god, is this like Yambus or something? Wait, uh, Yambus? Yambus? Oop, Yambus, Yambus. Yam. Is there a vowel that I haven't tried yet? Fucking hell, I don't know. Yeah. 
yams. I literally said yambus. I think I think in German they call it uh, yambus, like Latin, but uh, yams. Okay, makes sense. Um, I'd be. It just occurred to me that obviously be would be the word there. Um, I'd be safe and warm. I'd be safe and warm. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, why is there P there? I think I just. Uh, Keystone Lawman. No. Fervor. Ardor. I can't believe that was right. Uh, that was Reptile. Oh, is it, uh, what's, what's, what's the Disney character? Rango? Uh, is that Disney? Uh, Curbs, Hines, or R&B Disco Singer, Lynn. Silent Mark's brother. This end up. Oh, that's why the people's there. Yeah. Um, thus, ergo. Uh, 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 still don't know her. Use a little thread. Oh, so's. Um, see ya? Yeah. Um, top and net. And uh, you would think that I would get some of this by now. I don't know what could be named Kip, Cap, Kip, Cup, Cop, uh. This is definitely how I solve crossword puzzles. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Harpo. Cherry. Cherry. Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the, the, the name. Community actress Kristen... Shaw? Okay. Uh, dum dum big. Kahuna Big? I don't know. OP. Okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh, this one is also just missing a letter. I know, right? Riveting entertainment. Okay, uh... Oh, Little League. Heh. <laughs> hmm. I'm an idiot. Little... Yeah, little ends in an E. I wasn't wrong. I... Fucking hell. I got myself more confused there, but it did end up solving it somehow, so, you know. I'm assuming this acronym, so it could literally be any letter. R-O-T-C, okay. Uh, but, uh, uh, nope. A tub, okay. Oh, bottle. Do you need a bottle? Yeah. Um, have heard of that one before. Uh, drive. Oh, it's through. It's just spelled terribly. Uh, Harlan, Harlan, something like that. Harlan with an A, okay. I don't actually know what that letter is. That's not how you do let. Okay, there we go. Only have 34 seconds remaining. Uh, I missed the Y, but that's fine, yeah. Rhino! Oh, that was last letter! Cool. Wait, Rhino? That's an animal. Horned. Okay. You... Old now? Okay, yeah. I mean, I got 100%. Maybe didn't get it the honorable way, but I did get it. Um... Which brings us to the second topic. Would you rather? I said I've... Used to use, doesn't exist anymore, so I got a new one that I have tested a little bit. So hopefully that one works to my satisfaction and to yours. Um, would you rather be stuck living forever or 
have one life, but have it very well spent. <laughs> um, stuck in forever sounds very negative, so I'm gonna go with well spent. But um, I would choose immortality for any reasonable amount. Oh yeah, you can't quite see the presenters at the right, but you can always see more on the left, so you can infer. Uh, always be sunny outside or always be dark outside. It depends on how warm. I don't particularly care about sun or darkness. It's more about, uh, I guess, dark because presumably colder. Um, I mean, it's more of a practical consideration. Uh, have a jump scare every hour or vomit once every day vomit. It's not good for your insides because it's very sedate, 52%. Um, but... Yeah, walk everywhere or run everywhere. Uh, definitely walk. I mean, I also can't stay in a run for long enough to go to most places, like, further away. So, realistically, I would have to take breaks, and I would probably not be that much faster. Although, you would get better running, but still. Uh, get a brain freeze every time you drink anything. Get a toothache every time you eat anything. I think probably toothache, that seems worse, but you also drink more than you eat. Be able to heal anyone or bring dead people back to life. I'm gonna pick heal, um, because it's... It's sixty percent. Uh, it's more easily understood, right? It's like healing is very straightforward. Bringing the dead back is always, I mean, all the different questions about the practical implications, but also like just like who do you bring back, right? How do you choose? So like, healing is just seems like a universal good. Be smart but heavily relied upon. Be stupid but completely taken care of. Ah, you take what you know. Um, sixty percent. I, I, it's the happy pig, right? I, I, I can't, right? Have nothing to drink, have nothing to eat. I mean, it eventually kills you, but uh, nothing to eat. It's definitely, you can sustain it longer. Be ghosted by a crush, be told you aren't liked by a crush. Ghosting is terrible, just don't do it, just tell people. Um, Let's do like two or three more and always have dry lips, always have dry eyes. Uh, lips, definitely. I have dry lips for most of winter, it's not that bad. Um, be the first to arrive at parties, or be the last to leave, first to arrive. Some parties can go really long. Um, travel your country for free, but only by train. Travel the world for free, but only by boat. Uh, train. Although, the benefit isn't actually that big. I, I guess I should have picked boat, because um, the fact of the matter is, Traveling the country by train, unless you take high-speed trains for an entire month, costs 49 bucks. Um, so, also the country just isn't that big, so yeah, I mean, maybe in retrospect, that was the smartest move. Um, which leaves one segment and then we're already out of here. I know this was once again a quick one, but uh, I'm hoping to have a guest on next week, it's already planned, so hopefully nothing goes wrong there. And that will probably also be a little longer. Until then, my song of the week is At the End of the Rainbow by Hammerfall. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this one. I mean, it's a song that I like, I felt like it. I I really don't have much to say about this. There are quite a lot of Hammerfall songs that I like. This one ended up being the one I chose today. Uh, if you dress up the... Wait, nope. Scenes first. There we go. If you dress up the Trash Talk Podcast, don't forget to leave it a like. If you want to see more like this, subscribe to the channel. If you have something to say, leave a comment below or join the Discord server. Link is in the description also below. Until next time, that's it.